Okay, Mema, our next speaker, you may begin when you're ready. Around the 18th century, information from Europe used to take six to eight weeks to reach America, that depended on the speed of the ship at the time. From 1866, Cyrus Field started the communication evolution by laying the first transatlantic cable between two countries, England and America. Today, we are witnessing an equally fascinating evolution that can be summed up in a single word, wireless. According, his, according to CRN.com, a well-trusted technology website, wireless certifications are among the fastest growing and the most popular. Myself holds all these certifications, and today I'm going to share my experience with you about wireless, namely how it works, uh, the governing bodies of wireless, and we're going to take a peek at the future of wireless. That being said, let's get back to it. How does wireless work? Wireless transmissions use radio waves. We create radio waves by applying electricity to a conductor, which is the antenna in this case. You can think of a pump, and if you throw a rock in it, you can see those waves rippling through that point. And while the radio waves share the similar uh, qualities of this, and by changing and altering the properties of these waves, we can create a language that the devices can understand and make sense of each other, like the Morse alphabet. You can think of AM radio being an amplitude modulation, and FM radio and frequency modulation are the best examples of this. In early days, people even tried to use heat and light waves for wireless communication, but it didn't work because those elements cannot penetrate through hard surfaces, but radio waves has no such trouble. And it requires very little power for radio to operate. Even one thousandth of a watt is strong enough to make a successful connection between two devices. Let's look at the board and see what, what we're talking about. These are the light waves I just want to put here to represent very few uh, devices that use uh, light waves. The best example is your remote control, uses the infrared technology. Other than that, everything else uses uh, radio waves. This is solar waves, very hard to control, and it's not used in today's environment. And you can think of this your being antenna, and when electricity is applied, you create this magnetic field around it, it just grows. And it's just like a sphere looking thing, just more better representation here. And any more detailed explanation of radio waves would be too technical for our purposes. So I'm just going to move to the second part of the presentation, the governing bodies of uh, wireless. The author of official wireless study guide, Tom Carpenter, says FCC could be a scary word if we violate its rules. It is true. The FCC is an independent government agency only responsible to Congress and is the big brother of communication. It oversees almost any kind of communication in the United States and its territories. Being a home user, you don't have to worry about FCC regulations, but if you have a business or if you're an IT professional, it's very easy to uh, violate these rules. You can change the power settings in your radio, which create a better, a wider range, but that would uh, violate these rules and you can be fined up to a million dollars. So that's, uh, that's FCC. IEEE. IEEE is the world's group, largest electronic and electric engineers group. It's important to us because they write the standards for uh, computer networking. So the manufacturer can take these standards and build their devices, and those devices will work with each other. So whatever you buy from X company will work with uh, Y company. And 802.11 is the roadmap for wireless. And if there's an amendment to it, you can see those 11 that A, B, G, and the new coming is N. Those are the upcoming standards. Wi-Fi lines. Wi-Fi lines' main purpose is to promote use of wireless in home and business environments. They also certify the devices that pass the item place standards. People make the mistake of using wireless and Wi-Fi uh, interchangeably, but not every wireless device is Wi-Fi certified. These are some of the logos that you can see in the hotspots or some um, access points or network adapters that they use. Well, that being said, let's look at the future of wireless. CWNA got to wireless gun, a textbook also used at Valencia students here, states these amazing facts. Public hotspots are increasing with the rate of 350% a year. By 2007, almost all laptops will come with a wireless adapter as a standard equipment. The use of wireless in large businesses will grow by 50% next year. The 
number of homes and small businesses with wireless networks will increase to 32 million by next year. What does that mean for all of us? Wireless is coming. Despite being a very young technology, it's going to change our life drastically for the next, next decade to come. Such as, instead of using cash or credit cards, we are going to use implemented chips to make payments, which is also going to be used for medical purposes. The companies, instead of using barcodes, are going to use radio chips that give uh, real-time inventory information. And instead of having cables for internet access, we're going to have cities that are blanketed with uh, broadband wireless services wirelessly. So wireless is up and coming, and is ready to cut the cords once for all. Are you ready for it?